I'm Joe Condon. Welcome to our program. Our guest this week is Dr. Donald Brady of Syracuse. And Dr. Brady is a nationally recognized licensed clinical psychologist, licensed marriage and family therapist, and a knowledgeable person in the area of sports-related concussions. And he is a national and state school school psychologist and a certified addiction specialist in the areas of drugs, alcohol, eating, and health care. Wow. <laughs> Doctor, nice to have you with us today. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate you inviting me. Well, you've been talking uh, a lot, you know, and preparing for this program about concussions, and that's a term that we hear all the time. What exactly is a concussion? Okay. I think one of the things to keep in mind when we get into this field, you could talk to probably five different people and come up with five variations of a definition. And to keep it pretty simple, a concussion is a brain injury. In fact, in the mid-90s, there was federal legislation that said it's time that we start calling a traumatic brain injury, a ding, whatever. We call it a brain injury. We don't mess around with it because we're misleading the public by not using the correct terminology. And you told me that people never fully recover from a concussion. Why is that? Well, the brain has been injured. And as a result, it, it, it could be injured at the cell level, it could be injured more traumatically, various parts of the brain can be injured depending upon the severity of the uh, concussion. And w there's also studies that support this. Uh, there's a, a classic study which unfortunately people are not aware of, but we're talking a study that's 40 years old. And it basically says, okay, we had some people take a test. Uh, and this was prior to a concussion. Now these people sustained a concussion. They took the same test. They quote passed it, but the difference was it took longer to complete the tasks. So what it was showing that though they could quote function within the normal realm, it took a longer time to complete the test. They were not at the same cognitive functioning level prior to the accident. And in life, will they ever return to that uh, level or is it a permanent injury? I believe it's a permanent injury uh, because w another good example of this, uh, very simply put, we know if someone suffers a concussion, they're more apt to sustain another concussion, which then indicates you haven't recovered if it's more easily obtained to get another concussion after the first one. You have used with me before the term functional recovery. What is functional recovery? Okay, sure. Uh, functional recovery means that you are able to recover within an area or ability that you can function at your daily activities, but it doesn't mean that you still can function as quickly. You can still get tasks done, you can complete whatever you're doing, but you can't do it as quickly as you did before. A, a simple example would be if you know anyone who, I always like going back to the medical model, if you know someone who's broken their wrist, had a clean break, mm -hmm. they're told, it's healed, you're, you're okay. You talk to those people, they don't have the same feel the same range that they had before. They can still use their arm, still use their wrist, but it's not the same wrist that it was prior to the accident. You spend a lot of time working with schools, families, and athletes on head injury, which is really a brain injury, as you've been saying. Want to talk about that a little? Sure. One of the difficulties uh, when we're talking about uh, brain injury is, all, is getting people to use that term. You use the term head injury. People still use the term head injury. If you look at a head, you could have any part of the head being injured. You mm -hmm. could have the nose area, you could have the eyes area, you could have any area. So it just again goes back to precise terminology. Realistically, what I'm finding Many people are not educated in what we call the area of neuropsychology, which really helps give a better understanding of the workings of the brain. Uh, for example, I argue that, okay, in special education, uh, if someone is having some behavioral difficulties, emotional difficulties, they're required uh, to do a functional behavioral assessment. That type of knowledge is 70 years old. That's old time knowledge. And it doesn't necessarily work for someone who has a brain injury, whose brain is short circuiting, okay? Uh, so a lot of it is trying to educate people that, that these 
the concussion is a brain injury, it's serious and it's significant. And one of the real difficulties of getting a message across, especially if you have an athlete, now they've suffered a concussion or back in the classroom, and now they're perceived as goofing off, not doing the homework, and then the dumb jock syndrome comes up, the goof off, they're just in it for the fun. When realistically their brain has been injured, they, they can't attend as well, they can't concentrate as well, uh, their emotions could be impacted, Physically, they, they can tire more quickly. And so we, we have to be, be looking at this better and educating people about the wide parameter that there is of concussion symptoms. We've given a very narrow perspective as far as what concussion symptoms are. Uh, for example, if you look at a concussion list, you go to the uh, uh, CDC list, the uh, Communicable Disorder, the federal government, and, and if you, on the concussion, it'll say some concussion symptoms are. I'd be willing to bet many people look at that list and say these are the symptoms of concussions. And they don't realize that depending upon what area of the brain is injured or areas of the brain are injured, you can have multiple symptoms. Uh, so trying to educate school is not an easy task. Because that, that they seems surprising because this is like becoming a uh common knowledge, you hear much more about it than, say, two or three years ago. I was going to ask you, why is it when a kid playing a sport in school, you know, they get hurt and they're put back to uh, play in play rather quickly, maybe within a couple of hours or a couple of days or a couple of weeks? Why do the schools don't? Okay, one of the problems is, uh, well, the, a couple of years ago, I think a year ago last July, New York State passed the law that if someone suffers a uh, uh, concussion, brain injury in a sports event or practice, if they're suspected of it, they're supposed to be removed from play. Is that the New York State athletic law? Yes, that's, that's, that's the law or state education, I don't right. know which boundary right. it is. And, they're, and if they're suspected, they're supposed to be removed from play. Now, comp what complicates this, and, and I'll use myself for an example. I was in an auto accident, and my symptoms did not start showing, many of them, till five or six days after the accident. Now you hear about these wonderful, quote, sideline evaluations. Well, I suspect someone has a concussion. Let's give them this test on the sidelines to see if they're okay. Now, realistically, they may be okay with that very limited checklist that they're doing. Right. But the symptoms haven't had a chance to emerge. And, and what people don't realize, a concussion is not only that event that happens when they're laying on the field or, or whatever, but then as a result of that, within the body, there's chemical changes, there's, there's, there's changes that occur that can also create further damage. For example, if in the brain some blood vessels are injured, that interferes with oxygen go into the brain and therefore a depleted oxygen can cause some injury to various areas in the brain so it, 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 it's not a simple thing Joe now the uh, helmets protective gear uh, they uh, there's new helmets and there are new protective gear coming out which supposedly are reacting to what we're talking about are they that effective no one of the sad things that, that people uh, are under the impression of is if we build a better helmet, we will reduce the concussion brain injury. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what people don't realize is the brain will still bounce around in the skull, okay, uh, when a concussion occurs. And I'll, I'll show you an illustration yeah, you, of that. You were, you were showing that before going yeah, on the air today. okay. If you look, here we go. We brought our friend Felix here. Okay. Morning, Felix. Okay, he, he, he's feeling lonely, saying he, he ain't got no body. So, <laughs> okay, David now you know why I don't do comedy. <laughs> David, David Lee Roth objects. But <laughs> okay. okay, now if we remove his head, the top part of the skull, okay, <clears throat> picture the sponge here as being the brain, oversimplified, mm -hmm. okay? Now the brain floats on fluid. Okay, right. now say the impact comes to the front of the head. The, the brain will bounce off the front of the head and then typically bounce back. We call this a coup counter coup mm -hmm. effect, okay? And so what happens, you can, you can get bruising in the front, bruising in the back. Now also, 
if, you know, you watch football, people get a shot from the side, so that, you know, the ear shot. So what happens, now, not only do you have this, but you can now have brushing and bruising along the side. The problem with the side is that this doesn't reflect it, but on the side and also in the front, you have bony edges. And these bony edges, when the brain is pressing on it, can then further tear and, and, and rip the brain and then causing further brain damage. And, and more particularly, in the front, the lower part, where we call a prefrontal area, which mm -hmm. is basically, if I go like this, this is, this is the, the prefrontal area, all right? Mm -hmm. And this is important because this is where you have a lot of your thinking, your, your emotions, and planning. And so you get this injured, you're not only injuring the athlete, you're injuring the student part of the student athlete too, okay? And so, uh, you know, that's one area. On the side here and here, you can have memory problems. What also occurs, and, and there's an eye doctor I frequently communicate with, when, the, when the, you have this coup counter coup effect of front to back, in the back, you have the occipital area. And the occipital area is a vision area. There's about as a stats I've seen, 35, 40% of people who sustain a concussion can have vision problems. One of the common ones is called convergence, where your eyes don't work together. It's mm -hmm. a brain injury. It's not a vision issue that you need to just up your prescription. And, and this is where the problem, I think, is lying. We're not really educating people into all the symptoms that can exist. And from what you've told me, uh, dangerous sports right now are cheerleading, soccer, basketball, football, boxing, baseball, kickboxing, skiing, track, hockey, lacrosse, and ice skating. What's safe, bowling and curling? <laughs> <laughs> well, bowling is safe if you're not teaching someone how to do it and standing behind them and the ball slips out. But no, realistically, we haven't been critically looking at sports and saying, wow, there's a lot of injuries occurring. We gotta start taking this serious because not only is there the immediate consequence, you have also long-term consequences. You have the financial implication of, say, if, if someone's a little older, they get injured, they can't go to work. You, you have medical costs that are involved, both long-term and short-term. You also have the ripple effect on the family, the spouse, the significant other, the kids who, who are experiencing this, because this person may not be the same person after this injury. There's a classic uh, study, a uh, guy by the name of Gage, ironically, that he worked on railroad tracks, and if you think of Gage's and railroad tracks, in, in the mid-1800s. He was, they were laying track, if you remember, that was the mm -hmm, big mode sure. of transportation that was big, and this was over in Europe. And so he was laying track, and a fuse went off, a rod went right through his head. Yeah, uh, and as they say, he was not the same person after. Right. He lived, right. I mean, remarkably he lived, but there <clears> were personality <throat> changes, he could not also perform his job anymore. 